Hello everyone, welcome back to Dental Zen. Today we are here with a new video on enamel where we are going to learn the structure of enamel. Enamel, which is the outermost layer of the tooth, is made up of two components, inorganic component and organic component. Inorganic material, which constitutes about 96% of the enamel, is made up of hydroxyapatite crystals. These crystals are packed together in the enamel to form a structure which is known as enamel rods. And many such enamel rods are packed together to form what is known as enamel. So here you get your two important questions. First, what is the structural unit of enamel known as? It is enamel rods because enamel is made up of enamel rods. Then second, what is the structural unit of enamel rods known as? It is hydroxyapatite because enamel rod is made up of hydroxyapatite crystals. Now let's see what else is present in enamel along with the enamel rods. Enamel rods also known as enamel prisms. Surrounding them is a sheath which is known as rod sheath as you can see here this rod sheath is organic material of enamel and that is your another viva question what is organic material of enamel known as rod sheath third thing in between the enamel rods we can see another thing which is known as inter rod enamel inter means in between also known as interprismatic substance now the direction of hydroxyapatite crystals in enamel rods is different from that in the inter rod enamel so altogether, we have three things in the structure of enamel. First is enamel rods, also known as enamel prisms, which is the main structural component of enamel. Second is interrod enamel or interprismatic substance, which is present in between the rods. And third is the rod sheath, which is the organic component of enamel, which surrounds the enamel rods. Now, how do we these see these structures? Can we see them with naked eye? No, that's not possible. We see these structures in the microscope, under the microscope, when we put a tooth under the microscope. What? We can see structures like that? No. First, we have to grind these teeth to prepare very thin sections, which can then be visualized under microscope. These sections are called ground sections of the teeth. So there are many different types of sections and how they are prepared that we will deal in separate video. That can be a separate question. But for now, you can remember that the structure of the enamel can be studied in the ground sections of the teeth, which can be further of two types. If the sections of the teeth are cut along the long axis of the tooth, they are called the longitudinal sections. And if the sections are cut along the horizontal axis of the tooth, they are called cross sections or transverse sections. Now, enamel rods in longitudinal section will appear like this. So, this is enamel rod. This is dentine. And in between these rods and dentine is dentino enamel junction. But enamel rods in cross section can give different appearances. One of which can be like this, which resembles the keyhole. And it is known as keyhole outline, which we are going to discuss further in this video. So we can say that the structure of enamel mainly revolves around the enamel rods. So we should know different aspects of enamel rods like their shape, their number, what course they run, how long they are, what is their diameter and how do they appear in the longitudinal section and cross sections under my microscope now some structures of the enamel for example the orientation of the hydroxyapatite crystals within the rods and the interrod enamel cannot be studied in light microscope because of its limited resolution so these structures are studied with electron microscope and this structure is known as ultra structure of enamel very very important which we are going to deal in the next upcoming video so we can say the structure of enamel can include the enamel rods, ultra structure of enamel. Also, it can include many other things like direction of rods, then another appearance of enamel, which is called Gnarled enamel, then certain bands which are seen in the enamel, alternate light and dark bands called hunter sugar bands, lines which can be seen in enamel like incremental lines, neonatal line, surface structures of enamel where the rods end, then enamel cuticle that is covering of the enamel, then enamel lamellae, tufts and spindles together. They are called the hypocalcified structures of enamel. They are hypo means less calcified, less mineralized, which can come as a separate short node. And we can also talk about the junction between the enamel and dentine that is dentino enamel junction. So, so, so if you get a long question on the structure of enamel, you have to talk about all these things. Don't get stressed. We are going to talk about 
all these things one by one in separate videos along with the diagrams that you need to make so in today's video we are going to talk about the first part that is enamel rods so let's begin before we start i want you to quickly subscribe to dentos and if you have not done that till now also hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new new videos so first let's talk about the enamel rods we are going to talk about their shape number course length diameter and appearance one by one first the shape of enamel rods in longitudinal sections is cylindrical that is your first important question that is what is the shape of enamel rods in longitudinal section so it is cylindrical so they will run something like this and if we create a row of enamel rods it will look something like this and if we join multiple rows it will look like this such a complex structure so enamel rods are cylindrical in shape though they are not straight cylinders but they are wavy like this but they are cylindrical so it is better to call them rods rather than calling them prisms so we can say that rods is rod is more apt term second their number it is in a range because it is different for different teeth so it is number of rods is about 5 million in lower lateral incisors and it can be about 12 million in upper first molars that can be your another important by your entrance question third is the course of the rods now enamel rods starting from dentino enamel junction as they go towards the outer surface of the enamel they will take many bends like this they will not run a straight course and this special course is given a term which is known as tortuous course and that can be your important viva question course of enamel rods it is tortuous it is with many bends and because it can resemble waves so this is also said to be wavy or sinusoidal and that can be your entrance question course of enamel rod can be tortuous baby sinusoidal next the length of enamel rods can you imagine the length of enamel rods is more than the thickness of the enamel in which they are present yes this is possible because these rods as we just said they run a wavy course like this not only that they also run in an oblique direction that means just the wavy course is not in the straight direction it is in the oblique direction because of which length of most rods is greater than the thickness of enamel in which they are present also the length of the enamel rods in the cuspal region is more than those in the cervical region next we come to the diameter of enamel rods now let under the light microscope it has been observed that the average diameter is 4 micrometers but this is not seen it varies as outer surface of the enamel is greater than the dentinal surface where the rods originate so rods as they start from the dentino enamel junction as they move towards the outer surface as the outer surface is greater so their diameter also becomes greater so how much is this increase in diameter from dentino enamel junction to the outer surface of enamel it is in the ratio of 1 is to 2 that can be your another important entrance or viva question so the ratio of diameter of enamel rods at dej dentino enamel junction to that at the enamel surface is about 1 is to 2 Now, let's talk about the appearance of enamel rods enamel rods nearly give a clear crystalline appearance as they permit the light to pass through them so till now we have been studying the longitudinal section now in the cross section enamel rods can give different appearances let's see so they can occasionally appear hexagonal like this they can sometimes appear round or oval like this and sometimes in the cross section of human enamel these rods can resemble the scales of the fish so they give fish scale appearance so we can say that we can see many different appearances like hexagonal round or oval and fish scale appearance in the cross section of enamel very very important in the cross section of teeth now as we've seen that these enamel rods run a very complex course so recently three dimensional images obtained from cone focal laser scanning microscope have been reconstructed put together to study the path of these rods single rod as well as group of rods and it has been seen that these rods they do not maintain the same outlines throughout the enamel 
that means at different levels of enamel these outlines of enamel rods will be different so let's see if we cut a section near the dentino enamel junction so at this level these outlines of the enamel rods will appear something like this that is arcade outlines near dj and if we cut a section near the enamel surface then these outlines will appear something like this which is called keyhole outlines of the enamel surface which resemble keyhole and they have two parts that is head or body of the enamel rod and the tail so that is appearance let's quickly summarize what we have talked about the structure of enamel that is first part enamel rods enamel rods also known as enamel prisms in between them we have inter rod and surrounding them we have rod sheath then if we talk about their shape they are cylindrical in shape in the longitudinal section very very important number varies from 5 million in lower laterals to 12 million in upper molars they run a special course torture scores also can be called wavy sinusoidal course length is more than the thickness of the enamel cuspal region enamel rods are longer than those in the cervical parts of the teeth diameter increases as the rods move from dentino enamel junction to enamel surface in the ratio of 1 is to 2 and their appearance in the cross section can be different they can give hexagonal appearance round oval fish scale arcade appearance keyhole appearance so you can remember that this is the cross section appearance and this is the longitudinal section appearance so we can draw these two diagrams that is longitudinal section and the cross section of the enamel so that is all about the first part that of the structure of enamel that is enamel rods in the upcoming video we are going to talk about the second part that is the ultra structure of the enamel rods don't forget to watch that video so let's check what have you learned first what is the basic structure unit of enamel called what is the shape of enamel rods what is rod sheath what is the course of enamel rods then what is the ratio of diameter of enamel rods at the dino enamel junction to surface what are the different appearances of enamel rods in cross section so that is all for this video do tap on the like button if you really enjoyed the video and share it with your friends keep smiling keep learning keep watching and good luck for your exams see you in the next video till then take care bye bye